Welcome to the Mirror of the World, and I'm excited that you are able to join us today. We are going to be reading the book of Mark, chapter 10, and we're going to be talking about a lot of issues. We're going to be talking about the force. We're going to be talking about how it might be difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And if you are that kind of a person and say, but Lord, I've been serving you, what's going to happen? Uh, Jesus said that nobody serves God and they do it in vain. Let's quickly pray. Lord Jesus, I ask you that whatever you want us to see in your word today is what we will see. Open our eyes. Help us to hear the voice behind these words. And let those voice, let that word transform our life. Let there be deliverance. Let there be healing. Let there be salvation. In Jesus' name. So, quickly, because we're going to be reading 53 verses. So, let's quickly go and read. Then he arose from there and come to the region of Judea by the other side of Jordan. And um, multitudes gathered to him. Multitudes gathered to him again. And as he was accustomed, he taught them again. The Pharisee came and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife, testing him? And he answered and said to them, What did Moses command you? He said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and to dismiss her. And Jesus answered and said to them, Because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote this precept. For from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh, so that they are no longer two blood, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. In the house, his disciples also asked him again about the same matter. So he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her, and if a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. And shortly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arm, laid his hand on them, and blessed them. Now as he was going out on the road, one came running knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. You know the commandments do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, not bear for goodness, do not defraud, honor your father and your mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven, and come and take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word, and went away sorrowfully, for he had great possession. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his word. But Jesus answered and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sister or father or mother or wife or children or land for my sake and for, uh, for my sake and the gospel who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mother and children and lands with persecution and in age to come eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last first now they were on the road going up to jerusalem jesus was going before them and they were amazed, and as they followed them, they were afraid. Then he took the twelve aside again, and began to tell them the things that, that will happen to him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the scribe. 
and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to Gentiles. And they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him and it and third day he will rise again. Then James and John, the son of Zebedee, came to him, saying, Teacher, we want you to do us whatever we ask. And he said, What do you want me to do for you? Then he said to them, Grant us that we may sit on your throne, on your right hand, and the other on your left in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? And be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? He said to him, We are able. So Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink the cup that I drink. And with baptism and baptized with which you will be baptized. But to sit at my right on my right hand and on my left is not my mind to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared. And when the ten had it, they began to be greatly displeased with James and John. But Jesus called called them to himself and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. Whoever desire to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever or and whoever of you desire to be false shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a to give his life a ransom for many. Now they came to Jericho, as he went out of Jericho with his disciple and a great multitude, blind by Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard it that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out, cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then he then called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to me, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Now when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethphy and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and he said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered, it, you will find a cold tie on which no one has sat. Use it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the cold tie by the door outside on the street, and they lose it. But some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing? Losing the cold. And they spoke to them just as Jesus has commanded. So they let them go. Then they brought the cold to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others tore down leafy branches from the... Okay, I think we started, <laughs> we started reading... Um, so we're now reading Mark chapter 11. So we, we, uh, we will read that in the next chapter. But let's quickly, let me quickly uh, point out one or two things. Uh, to us from the chapter that we have read. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is divorce. And of course, I'm not going to be able to do justice to that in that video. But what I just want to point your attention to was here. Um, Jesus says something. So they ask him, he said, why did Moses permit it? And Jesus said, Moses permitted divorce because of the hardness of your heart. But the bit I want you to pay attention to is that any time a story or call, like two or three times in the Bible, is good, is a good practice for you to read different accounts. So for example, the book of Mark. Mark didn't tell us that there is there is an exception to divorce. So God did not permit divorce, but there is an exact exception to it. And that exception that was recorded, of course, was the fact that where there is a case of adultery. You know, but this is my wisdom. I know that there is a case of adultery that is involved here. But when you look at the original context, said because of the hardness of your heart, because people refuse to follow the law of God, and that could result in something that could put the other person at a great risk. It may even involve 
loss of life. So that means when we take all the accounts together and we look at it, there may be other exceptions, but the only one you can find so far in it, you know, um, is the one that has to do with uh, fornication. I don't want to be drawn into controversies about, but I want you to read all the accounts in the book of Matthew, the book of... It's, it's amazing, it's interesting, because Luke tend to document the details. But well, it's really surprising that when it comes to the subject of divorce, he didn't really say quite a lot about it, you know, which makes me to be curious. But hey, we are not here analyzing the gospel. The other thing that uh, Jesus Christ said was that it's difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And the disciples said, and said, look, um, I, we have left all to follow you. And Jesus even now said something, they said, nobody that has left his wife, I'm surprised about that, he shouldn't leave your wife to follow Jesus. Are you getting something there? Left mother, father, wife, children, that he said in this world, they will reap hundredfold, although wife was omitted. So you are not you are not expected to read hundredfold result when it comes there. Well, anyway, uh, Jesus was trying to say right here to the rich young ruler that was disappointed that look, uh, when Peter said, when Jesus said to them that look, it's difficult for rich people to enter into the kingdom of God because their money had them. And Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. That's where we're going to stop. I want you to um, send feedback to me. What minister to you from this video? What minister to you from the whole of Mark chapter 10? My assignment is to encourage you to read the scripture. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single person that is sick today. People with back pain, back pain, back pain. Lord, thank you for healing them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for healing back pain. Yes, thank you for healing back pain. We give you praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want him to be your Lord, you want him to be your master, say these prayers after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I confess that I'm a sinner. I come before you today. Forgive me my sins. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Now, if you say that prayer, you're going to see our email, our email address shortly at the bottom of the screen. Please do write us and we're going to send you some materials that is going to help you grow spiritually. And also, you can join all our, line, uh, all our online services. Thank you very much for watching this video. God bless you and have a lovely evening. Bye.